There's a video of this YouTuber going around where he almost lost his life doing what he loves, paragliding. He fractured his neck, broke his back and had some other injuries, but thankfully he escaped, escaped death. And I was like, you know what? It came to me. Why not me share a video with you with my close call, death call, doing what I love? The incident happened in 19th of November 2017. That's when God decided to give Kush a second chance. 19-year-old Kush was doing what he loves. Lifting weights, getting bitches, and riding his motorcycle. You're gonna sit here with me. We're gonna do a dramatic storytelling. Sit. 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 <coughs> if you've been around the channel and you've been to the streams, you know my motorcycle history. You know I had four bikes and I was riding for... Six years, I was riding bicycles with these bicycle support handles in kindergarten. I was attempting wheelies all the time. It, it was in my blood. And when I was uh, 14 or 15 years old, that was the first time I got on, the, on a super bike. And it was a CBR 1000. That was the time I fell in love with super bikes. The feeling it gave me just made me feel free. And that was the day I was 14 or 15. I decided that I want to buy a motorcycle. I went to my dad. My dad is like, I'm not going to pay for my son's death. Fair enough. I was like, you know what? What if I decided to work and collect money and buy it? He was like, you can do that. He never believed I could pull it off. By the age of 17, I had 25,000 dirhams. That is around like seven thousand dollars maybe less or more 1k went to my license and 6k that's when i bought a, my first bike gsxr 600 cc if you know your bike you know what i'm talking about 2009 i really got screwed over that bike but i only had it for six months i started riding with groups and the 600 cc wasn't enough for me so i sold it put some money on it and i bought a cbr 1000 cc 2009 bunny shaped after i got my first thousand cc bikes ladies were coming to me left and right i was telling them hold on slow down one by one there was too many ladies that i could not even handle i didn't know what to do then came the day november 19th 2017 another day for kush he was going to travel two cities to go to from sharza to abu Dhabi. it was a one hour and 20 minute car ride but with my bike it was only 30 minutes if you know what i'm talking about i was going around 290 to 300 kilometers an hour miles per hour i think that will be 170 miles an hour i'm not very sure going left and right zigzag i was at a very large highway which it had like around seven to eight lanes i was at the first lane going that speed i was zigzagging between the yellow lane and between the first uh one two three lines but then it started to slow down a little bit a little bit of traffic started to come but i was keeping the same speed i was zigzagging as i was going with that speed first second third fourth sixth and seventh were full the only empty lane was the fifth lane and i was going in that speed and i always did this before as well my dumb ass thought i was invincible i thought nothing can touch me i decided to go from the first lane to the fifth lane so with that speed i can go back to the first lane again and i'm gonna look cool and everyone will be like oh my god who, who was that who was that G.I. Joe bike that flight, bro, is from Tron. I had big ass speakers inside my helmet. It was straight out of a Need for Speed type of shit. But little did I know that from the sixth lane, while I was going 280 kilometers an hour, from the sixth lane, a pickup truck going 80 kilometers an hour decided to turn into the fifth. The 200 kilometer speed difference, I looked left, I saw cars, I looked right, I saw trucks. Thank God I did not attempt to go between them because I would have been into pieces. One thing about bikes over the years I learned is you should never panic. Even with cars, you panic, something bad is about to happen. I kept my cool. I started putting gears down, 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 brake on both back and front. My speed came down to 160, 170 real quick, but it was still not enough to stop the impact. My front tire went under the truck. I flew into the truck. I hit the back of it. I, with my helmet, my bike went under the truck. They went together, but I started flipping, flipping, flipping. All I saw was ground sun, ground sun. It was 1 p.m. It was pretty hot as well. Ground sun, ground sun, ground sun, ground sun. I got up. 
I stopped, I got up, I looked behind me, I saw all the seven lanes, they're all fully stopped, and they're looking at me. I was up, my body was still in shock, it did not adjust to the pain yet. I could feel the breeze hitting my body because my clothes were ripped, but I was too afraid to look down. As I started walking towards the yellow lane on the right, I got there, I threw myself there, after I got on the ground, that was a time where everything all at once hit me. I could not move an inch of my body after that. My, body, my brain did not still adjust to the pain yet. But thankfully, I knew all my body parts were attached. Nothing was ripped off. That was the most important thing. Around 20 people came on top of me. They were just like watching me. The first person who came out, she was a British woman, blonde woman, who came up to me and I, I had my helmet on, right? My helmet screen was open, but I could see, I could feel the sun hitting me. The second her face covered the sun, I started making jokes in that fucking moment. I was like, are you an angel from heaven? I was bad, bro. It, it was my, it was my whole days. It was my fuckboy days. And I kind of flirted with that woman, but she was like, oh, oh my God, are you okay? Are you okay? I was like, I'm fine now that you're here. Anyways, you get the whole point. The flirting game was bad, but somehow I used to pull a lot of women back then. I don't know what happened now, but more people came. They called an ambulance. Ambulance was on the way. It took them around like 20 minutes to reach because we were almost at the border of another city. So it was like a very long distance uh, to them as well. For the ones who were living here, it was at Jebel Ali, almost towards Abu Dhabi. The lady took my phone and she was like, who do you want me to call so they can come and check on you on the hospital? I was like, no one, but she insisted, so I called my dad. Now, she is speaking to my dad first, okay? This is what she said. Again, if you watch my videos for a couple of years, I made videos with my dad as well. My dad is like super chilled. He doesn't really give a shit about anything but his birds and his fishes and his you know own life my dad is a pretty chill dude the lady said to my dad sir do not panic the most important thing is that he is alive he is okay my dad is like what are you talking about so he got that iranian full accent he was like well, what are you talking about she was like your son has been into an accident but he's alive he is my father was like give the phone to my son you donkey my uh the lady gave the phone to me and it's like what happened i was like eh, nothing just you know been into an accident it's chill he was like okay like is it bad i was like nah it's chill he was like okay well which hospital they're taking you i was like eh, it's too much traffic no need to come he never showed up <laughs> and some of you might be like oh my god that's so sad coach no it's not he's always been there for me Except the hospital. Well, it's not that it wasn't that important. He made sure I'm okay. Long story short, I was missing one of my shoes. It was in a highway 200 meters away on the first lane. My socks were in pieces. My hoodie was in pieces. My jeans were all ripped up. Ambulance came. They gave me immediately a shot of morphine. The very chill ambulance dudes. They were a Philippines nationals. And we were chilling. We were sitting inside the ambulance. They were checking up on me, my blood pressure and these things. And they were not hitting the sirens. It was my first time ever being in an ambulance. But after they gave me that morphine shot, I saw birds flying in the sky. I felt no pain. I was still too scared because I have a blood phobia for the ones who don't, for those of you who don't know. I was too afraid to look at my injuries, but I told the guy, hit the sirens. It's my first time and I'm going to take full advantage of this experience. That fucker never hit the sirens because there was like, it's no traffic. I got to the hospital. First thing they did, they did an MRI check on me. They, you know, checked for any broken things. The doctor came back and the doctor was like, you are very lucky that nothing is broken. I was like, it is not luck. It, was, it is Iranian blood. He was like, shut up. He gave me the second shot of morphine. I had two morphines that day. I was not seeing birds anymore. I was seeing flying giraffes. I was in a very happy mood. I was smiling. Things were as if I was on a fucking holiday. Shortly after that, I heard a very loud cry just out of nowhere. And I, I, I was kind of napping and I looked at the side. My mom showed up crying and my brother was like, you chill, you're fine, you're fine like that. I was like, yeah, 
it's a, it's, it's a chill, it's a chill thing. Don't worry about it. It just happens. It's, it's part of an experience. You know, you, you need to get humbled by these streets. You know, I was just talking shit. I was high on morphine. Long story short, what was the injuries? I lost a lot of skin on my hand because I was dragging. It, uh, the heat, the ground cut through all of my gloves. And I got this injury from it. As you can see, there's an extra piece of meat over there, and my knee has never recovered as well. I had a uh, very hard hit on my right shoulder, and I had a very hard hit on my right knee. So I could not bend my right arm and my right leg, whole leg, for about three months. I lost seven to eight kilos in the duration of that two, three months. I was doing nothing except watching shit and masturbating. How, how did fucking masturbation work in that time? I was putting a fucking tripod in front of me in the bathroom. I had no skin on my hands. What did I want to do? I put a cooking glove. So how did it go down in that duration? I was sitting back in the toilet like that. My fucking legs were could not bend. So it was all straightened out like this. Fucking blood was not rushing through it. My hand was like this. It was a crazy time. I was in a wheelchair for like two, three days. The first week was so painful because after the morphine hit off, it was so much fucking pain. So much fucking came, pain came all at once the first three days, especially. I was literally screaming through my sleep. But hey, I mean, it was my passion. I still wanted to ride even after that. After three months, I decided to, after I healed up, I bought another bike, a GSX-R 1000cc 2000 and nine again then after that two years after that i bought another gsxr 1000 cc again extended to 2012 and after my lesson in 2017 i learned that i'm not invincible i decided to do not go fucking 170 miles an hour instead go to a speed where you can control so you go a little bit higher than everyone else but if anything happens you can always stop prevent things from happening Ever since I never had an accident, I was still speeding from here and then because if you have a demon under you, you cannot control yourself. This is a very big problem with a lot of bikers out there. But the crazy part was after that day, 19th of November, three, four days later after my accident, like 20 something, 24th of November, one of my friends from the group, he had an accident and he went into a one year coma. Sorry, I keep on sneezing. And three days after his accident, which is a week after mine, Another friend of mine, who was also 19 years old back in the day, he also had another accident, but his was too fatal, and he unfortunately passed away. Even though after that, I still wanted to ride, my time came to an end. When I got into a relationship in 2021, and by the end of 2021, I needed a car for a relationship. So the second I sat my ass down on the car seat, the fucking breeze hit, the, my AC car seat hit my balls and my balls were not sweaty anymore from all that bike ride during this heat. I could feel the AC. I became a lazy fuck. I was not riding my bike for a month or two. I was touching it once a month or every two, three months. I was decided to only keep it for winter time. Six months after I bought my car, my friend had an accident with his bike. Another friend who lost a whole leg. That was my time. That was it. I was like, you know what? That is it for me. Now, I'm not saying these things and, you know, discourage you to uh, not get a bike because it's dangerous. You obviously know the risk. You probably don't know it, you know, until something happens to a friend or something happens to you. I was the same way. A lot of people told me the dangers of it and I was still wanted to ride. I did not understand it. And do I regret it? Do I regret ever buying a bike, riding a bike? Fuck no. It was one of the best times of my life. But am I ever going to go back to it? Probably not. That time is over. Even though like my fucking back right now from all the video editings and video shoots and all the drama that I've been seeking of. I think the second I get on a fucking bike, <laughs> there's going to be a crack. That fucking dust is going to go all over the place. I'm too old for this shit now. Thankfully, nothing was broken. No fucking iron in my body. No permanent damage happened to me during that the accident but it was a very good lesson for me to learn that you're not fucking invincible i basically got a second chance in life because if that accident would have gone differently i wouldn't have been here sitting in front of you and telling you this story so yeah i just thought i'll share some of my life experiences with you the things that i went through and more to come inshallah in the future as well yeah just wanted to share that with you take it for yourself i'll see you in the next one